we will discover together the passé composé form of the verb aller. Aller is to go. Okay, and remember that aller is uh, one of the tricky verbs in uh, at the passé composé form because it will use être and not avoir as most of the verbs. Okay, so that's the reason why here you will have the form je suis allé. Okay, and then you can make the liaison here. Je suis allé. Je suis allé. Tu es allé. Tu es allé. Il est allé. Il est allé. You've got this little liaison between the two. Il est allé. Feminine form. Elle est allée. Okay, so have a look here. Remember, if you don't know that already, then I would advise you to check uh, the lesson uh, the, on uh, the passé composé that we did, we did uh, previously. Okay, so you've got to add this feminine mark at the end of your participe passé here, just because elle is feminine, and then you're using this être verb to construct the passé composé. That's the reason why. Phonetically, it doesn't exist. You don't pronounce it, so you get « elle est allée » and then for the masculine form « il est allé ». So « allé » is pronounced the same way. But still, you have to write it. Okay. Same thing that if you get to put the, the plural form, then you will have to add this « s » mark of the plural at the end of your participe passé form here. Okay. « Nous sommes allés » you don't pronounce it Okay, but you write it. Nous sommes allés. Vous êtes allés. Vous êtes allés. Same thing here. You put it, but you don't pronounce it. And then here, masculine form. Ils sont allés. So masculine plural. You put this S. Ils sont allés. Little liaison between the two. Ils sont allés. Elles sont allées. Feminine and plural here. Okay, uh, S, you don't pronounce them, but still, you've got to write them. And then this little liaison here. Elles sont allées. Okay, so let me repeat the whole thing for you. Je suis allé. Tu es allé. Il est allé. Elle est allée. Nous sommes allés. Vous êtes allés. Ils sont allés. Elles sont allées. The passé composé form of the verb parler. Parler is to speak or to talk. Okay, so let's discover it right now. First person, j'ai parlé. Tu as parlé. Il a parlé. Elle a parlé. Nous avons parlé. Vous avez parlé. Ils ont parlé. Elles ont parlé. All right. So remember, passé composé, you've got to use two parts. The first one, avoir in that case, and then what we call participe passé. This participe passé form, as you can see, doesn't change for all the persons. You will have to put avoir at the present tense here. Okay. J'ai parlé. Tu as parlé. Il a parlé. Feminine form, elle a parlé. Nous avons parlé, little liaison here, nous avons parlé, vous avez parlé, same thing here, little liaison, ils ont parlé, same thing here, ils ont, elles ont parlé. Okay, okay so we'll just see one more time uh, the passé composé form of finir, finir is to finish or to end, okay, and let's see how it goes. J'ai fini, j'ai fini. Fini. Tu as fini. Tu as fini. Il a fini. Feminine form. Elle a fini. Nous avons fini. Nous avons fini. Vous avez fini. Vous avez fini. Ils ont fini. Elles ont fini. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Remember, 
as we saw previously. You've got avoir here, and then you've got fini. So this participe passé form, the second form that you get to add to construct the passé composé. And fini doesn't change. It's here all the time, and it's written the same way. Okay? J'ai fini. Tu as fini. Il a fini. Elle a fini. Nous avons fini, vous avez fini, ils ont fini, elles ont fini. Les unités de mesure. Ok, so let's start. Un millimètre. Les millimètres. Un centimètre. Les centimètres. Un mètre. Les mètres. Un kilomètre. Les kilomètres. Un mètre carré. Les mètres carrés. Un litre. Les litres. Un gramme. Les grammes. Un kilo. Un kilogramme. Les kilos. Les kilogrammes. Les faux amis, so they look the same in English and in French, but then the meaning is different. Okay, so let's start now. And then the first one, it will be travailler. Travailler. Okay, remember when you get this E and then double L like that and a vowel. Y. Travailler. Okay, travailler. And it means to work. Okay. Sympathique. Remember the H. H is not pronounced. Sympathique. Okay, and it means friendly, nice. Then, rester. Rester. Regular verb from the first group, easy to conjugate. Rester. Okay, and it means to stay, to remain. Then, la monnaie. Monnaie. Okay, final uh, not pronounced. La monnaie. Okay, and it means small change. Le magasin. Le magasin. Okay, remember you've got only one S between two vowels. Then you get the sound Z, alright? And then the ending here is IN, so it's nasal, it goes in your nose, and it's un. Magasin. Okay? And it's shop. Alright? Then, la librairie. Okay, remember I here, li. Brairie, final E, uh, not pronounced. La librairie, okay, and it's a bookshop. Then, la journée, la journée, final E, uh, not pronounced, and it's day. Grand, final D, not pronounced, okay, G, R, G, 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 and then the nasal, en, grand, okay, and it means big or tall. Then, gentil. So remember this final L is not pronounced. Gentil. Gentil. And it's nice or kind. Then, attendre. Attendre. Remember, final E, uh, you don't insist on it. It just gives you the possibility to pronounce the dr, dr. Okay, so attendre. Attendre. All right, and it's to wait. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 5, Leçon N. And in this lesson, we'll discover vocabulary regarding le corps humain. Le corps humain. So let's start now. La tête. La tête. L'épaule. L'épaule. Okay, so in that case, I did put this F here, just to indicate you that it's feminine, okay, because you cannot see it here with the, the, the article L, okay, l'épaule. 
la poitrine, la poitrine, le tronc, le tronc, ok, remember, final C is not pronounced here, le tronc, ok, l'estomac, l'estomac, ok, same thing here, final C, not pronounced, and then M means that this word, estomac, is masculine, ok, l'estomac. La hanche, la hanche, remember, H here is not pronounced, so you get the sound en, hanche at the beginning. Le poignet, le poignet, so this combination of ET at the end will basically open the sound, so you get E, E, poignet, ok, remember, G, N, 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 Poignet, le poignet. La cuisse, la cuisse, double S and then two vowels before and after. It will give you a really strong S sound, ok? Cuisse, cuisse, la cuisse. Le genou, le genou. La jambe. La jambe, ok, remember, A, M, when you combine these two, basically it's just like A, N, so it's nasal and it's en, ok, so you get la jambe. La cheville, la cheville, remember, double L like that, after I, 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 cheville. Le pied. Le pied, le dos, le dos, final S not pronounced, ok, le dos, le cou, le cou, le bras, le bras, same thing here, final S not pronounced, le bras, le coude, le coude. So it's actually quite funny because the only difference between these two is this d, d at the end. Okay, so here in this one you've got le cou, okay, and then the second one here is le coude. Okay, remember you don't insist on this final e, it only gives you the sound of d at the end. Le coude, okay. Le nombril, le nombril. Le doigt de pied, le doigt de pied, la main, la main. So this combination A, I, N is quite interesting because it will give you the sound un. So it's really a nasal, it goes in your nose, okay? And it's un, main, la main. Le doigt, le doigt. Okay, so don't be frightened by this G because basically you don't pronounce it and then the final T you don't pronounce it. So the only thing you get to pronounce is this combination of three word or letters, sorry, here. D, O, I, okay? O, I, it's wa and then D, doa. That's the only thing. Doa, le doa, okay? Le pouce, le pouce, l'ongle. L'ongle, ok, I forgot to write it, but it's masculine, ok, l'ongle, la peau, la peau, ok, remember this combination of three vowels, well it's quite rare in French, but then, well, well you can see it's, but then, so, the sound that you will have to pronounce when you've got the, these three vowels combined together, it's the sound O, ok, so really simple, O, ok, so you get la peau, ok, la peau, that's it, if you want more, then the address is here, youtube.com slash imagier, and then the website is here, if you want to see more material, or then write me a beautiful letter, or a mail, ok, have a great day, bye bye. Le visage, the face, so we just saw the human body, previously, 
and so we'll continue with le visage if that's okay with you let's hope so so let's start now les sourcils les sourcils okay so it's quite strange because you get this ls at the end but then well you don't pronounce them les sourcils l'œil l'œil strange combination of vowels here okay and then you will get the sound e uh, and then y œil all right and it's masculine by the way un œil l'œil okay plural form les yeux okay so that's the tricky thing when you compare the, the, the um, singular form and the plural form okay so l'œil singular and then the plural les yeux okay you make this liaison between the two les yeux okay final x not pronounced les yeux les cils les cils final s not pronounced les cils la joue la joue final e uh, not pronounced here la joue la gorge la gorge okay remember when you get this combination g and o you get the sound go go okay so gor gorge and then g and e gives j la gorge la gorge le front final t not pronounced le front okay remember this nasal o n on 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 le front le menton okay same thing here so you get two nasal the first one here en and then the second one here on le menton l'oreille remember when you get this e l l and then the vowel it's y y l'oreille all right and it's feminine by the way une oreille l'oreille le nez so remember when you get this combination a z here at the end of a word it's e le nez le nez la bouche so remember c h combined together will give you this sh sh sound la bouche okay la lèvre remember accent grave here a a really open la lèvre la lèvre la bouche again i don't know why don't ask me <laughs> i was tired when i made this one so la bouche one more time la langue remember when we've got this g and then u and then e we get the sound g g because when you combine this g and then e remember it was the sound j okay so you get to put this u between the two to get the sound g g so you get la langue langue okay la dent final t not pronounced la dent les cordes vocales les cordes vocales so you can notice that as usual in french you've got this mark of the plural at the end s and then s here as well but you don't pronounce them okay les cordes vocales indicateur de temps so if you want to introduce some uh, sentences or concept at the past present or future tenses then you will have to use them so let's start now with the past le passé okay and then the first one is hier hier means yesterday okay hier so remember this h here is not pronounced okay so hier then 
la semaine dernière. Okay, so it's last week. Okay, but then if you look carefully, we've got la semaine. So semaine means week. Okay, and then dernière is coming after. Okay, so la semaine dernière. And in that case, if you look carefully as well, you get dernière. So it's the feminine form because la semaine, la is a feminine word. Okay, so la semaine dernière, last week. And then we've got this autrefois, so it could be translated like in olden days or in olden times, okay? Autrefois, so A-U, autrefois, final S not pronounced, okay? Autrefois. Then for the present now, we've got aujourd'hui, means today, okay? So don't be afraid by this word because it looks a bit scary if you look at it like that, but uh, take the time to, well, divide it. So the first one, a u o jour, and then dui, okay? Ash is not pronounced, so you only get this dui thing. O jour dui, aujourd'hui, and it means today, okay? Then, cette semaine, okay? So we've got here what we call an adjective demonstratif, okay? This, set, okay? And it's at, at the feminine form, set, and then semaine, week, this week, cette semaine, all right? And then, maintenant, okay? Normally, we tend not to pronounce this, uh, okay? So we get this, maintenant, maintenant, okay? Now, for the future now, we've got demain, and it means tomorrow. Demain, remember, when you combine this A-I-N, you get the sound un. Demain, demain. Okay? Then, la semaine prochaine. So it's next week. Okay? And as we had for the past tense here, we had la semaine dernière. Okay? So last week and dernière was coming after semaine, exactly the same concept. So you will have to put prochaine, so it's the feminine form here, after la semaine, okay? So next week, la semaine prochaine. Mm -hmm. And then bientôt, okay? Remember you put this accent circonflex, but you don't write it. Uh, you, sorry, you write it, but you don't pronounce it. And then the final T is not pronounced. Bientôt, okay? And then you could translate this bientôt as soon. Okay, so something that will happen in the future. All right, so let's see them one more time. First one, hier. Second one, la semaine dernière. Then, autrefois. Aujourd'hui. Cette semaine. Maintenant. Or then, maintenant. Okay. Demain. La semaine prochaine. And then, bientôt. L'expression de la quantité. So it's quite important, so I would like you to take a few minutes to watch carefully this video. And we'll start right now. L'expression de la quantité. So the first thing that we'll discover together, it's plusieurs. So plusieurs means several, okay? And so the way you will have to construct it is that after that you will have to add an a nom, a noun, okay, but then keep in mind that it should be at the plural form, okay, so several, and then followed by a noun at the plural form, so let's see a few examples now, j'ai invité plusieurs amis, j'ai invité plusieurs amis, okay, so remember, j'ai invité, so it's the past form uh, of invité to invite, okay, plusieurs, and then amis, friends, Okay. J'ai invité plusieurs amis. Second example. Il y a, il y a, there is, plusieurs enfants, kids, dans le jardin. In the garden. Il y a plusieurs enfants dans le jardin. Okay. And then, elle a fait plusieurs gâteaux. So, faire here at the passé composé form. Plusieurs, faire, sorry, it means to, to do, okay? Plusieurs gâteaux, cake, okay? So what you can see here is that ami here is with S, so it's the plural form, okay? 
here right after plusieurs you've got enfant with s at the plural form and then here you've got that gâteau with x so it's the plural form all right so let's see now the second one uh, quelque you don't pronounce the final s here quelque means few okay and same thing as we had previously you will have to add a noun at the plural form okay so let's see the first example j'ai rencontré rencontré is to meet so it's the past form j'ai rencontré quelques collègues colleague j'ai rencontré quelques collègues okay second example nous avons so it's avoir to have at the present form quelques petits problèmes petits small problem problem avec lui with him nous avons quelques petits problèmes avec lui okay and then the last example elle a mangé quelques bonbons oh we get two dots here i don't know why but only one is enough elle a mangé quelques bonbons okay so manger here is to eat past form and then bonbon candies so same thing here, if you look carefully, you've got collègue with S, so plural form, okay? Here it's quite interesting because we've got this adjective petit, small, little, but then it's still at the plural form with S and problem at the plural form as well, okay? And then bonbon here at the plural form with S as well, okay? So now, other possibility would be ne and then aucun masculine form or aucune feminine form so no or not any okay and after that you will have to put a name or a noun sorry at the singular form okay so ne aucun ne aucune plus a noun at the singular form all right so let's see the first example elle ne veut aucun conseil okay so you can see here that it's elle ne veut, so she doesn't want, okay, uh, vouloir is to want, aucun, so not any, no, and then conseil, it's advice, okay, so elle ne veut aucun conseil. Other example, je n'ai eu aucun problème, okay, so here, est eu, so it's the verb to have, at the passé composé form, okay? Je n'ai eu aucun problème. Problème, problem. So, I didn't have any problem. Il ne fait aucune erreur. Il ne fait, faire is to do, and it's the present form, aucune erreur. Error is mistake. All right, so if you look carefully here, you get ne and then aucun, okay? So it's at the masculine form because conseil is a masculine word. Here, it's quite interesting because as usual in French, when we've got this ne and then we've got a vowel after, so it can be quite tricky. So in most of the cases, this e will disappear, okay? So you take it away, but then still aucun is coming here. All right, and then it's at the masculine form because problem is a masculine word. All right, and then the last example, well, you've got the first part, ne, okay, not modified because faire starts with F, so no problem. But then it, here you've got this aucune, okay, aucune, so because uh, erreur is a feminine word, so you will have to put this aucune. All right, so let's proceed now. Un peu, or peu, and it means a few or few, okay? So we'll be constructed with la préposition de, so you'll have to put this de after, and then you will have to put the noun without the article, okay? So if you want to construct this a sentence with a few or few, so remember, un peu, or then peu, then don't forget to put this de, and the noun without the article, okay? Then if you want to use this autant, it means as much. Same construction, you will have to put this de and 
the name or the noun, sorry, without the article. All right, so as much, we use this autant de and the noun without the article. All right. If you want to use moins, moins means less. Same thing here, you will have to use de after and the noun without the article. All right, so remember less in French it's moins, de, and the noun without the article. If you want to use plus, more, okay, in some cases you will have to pronounce it plus, okay, so you will see that a bit later, de, and then the noun without the article. All right, remember more, plus, or then plus, de, and the noun without the article. If you want to use beaucoup, beaucoup means a lot of. It, look, it looks a bit strange, huh? beaucoup, like that. Remember, you don't pronounce the final P, okay? And then you get this combination of vowels, E, A, U, and you get the sound O. So technically it's beaucoup, okay? So it's not difficult to produce orally. Beaucoup. A lot of okay same construction you will have to put the after and then the noun without the article okay a lot of beaucoup de and the noun without the article if you want to use trop and trop means too many okay then you will have to put the and the noun without the article okay remember too many trop don't pronounce the final p trop de and the noun without the article all right and then assez assez means enough okay assez remember two vowels here a uh, and then e uh, and then double s so it's really strong the s assez assez okay assez so same construction de and the name or the sorry the noun without the article okay so enough assez de and the noun without the article well we'll see few colors les couleurs okay so not all the colors because we're just starting okay so let's see what we've got blanc blanche okay so i wanted to put for each color the masculine form here and then the feminine form here okay so here masculine blanc don't pronounce the final C and then blanche okay remember when you combine this CH you get the sound sh, blanche okay so blanc blanche noir noir so it's quite funny because you will have to add this E at the end of noir for the feminine form but then you don't pronounce it Okay, so phonetically it is exactly the same. Noir, noir. Okay? Gris, don't pronounce the S, but then for the feminine form, grise. Remember? Grise. Alright? So when you add this E, uh, basically it gives you the pronunciation or the possibility to pronounce the previous letter here. It's Z. Grise. Alright? So gris. Masculine form, feminine form, grise. Bleu, bleu. So same thing that we had for noir, you just add this E at the end, but then you don't pronounce it. Bleu, bleu. All right, so let's see them one more time. Blanc, blanche. Noir, noir. Gris, grise, bleu, bleu. Okay, so let's continue. Bleu foncé, bleu foncé. Okay, so foncé, this adjective, well, basically it will be like dark. Okay, bleu foncé. Bleu clair, so same thing here, this Clair, adjective is like light, okay, bleu, clair, 
jaune. Okay, so it will be the same at the masculine and the feminine form. Jaune. Jaune. Rouge. So same thing here, same form for the masculine and the feminine. Rouge. Remember, G E J J J. Rouge. Vert. So masculine form, don't pronounce the final T. Vert. Feminine form, verte. So listen carefully. I don't say T, but it's T. Verte. Verte. Okay, so as usual, this final E uh, only gives you the possibility to pronounce this t, t Verte. Okay? Marron. Same thing for the masculine and the feminine form. Marron. Les verbes impersonnels. So they are really useful and it's quite important to see them. And so we'll focus on three verbs. The first one, être, to be. Second one, faire to do, and the last one, avoir, to have, okay? And so, the important thing with the, this uh, concept or this idea, les verbes impersonnels, is that, well, you will see in the examples, uh, they are not connected to a person, and that's the main, main concept. So, even if in French we use this il, so the pronom personnel il, okay? Technically, if you want to translate that directly in English, it would be translated by it, okay? But then in French we use this il instead of it, okay? So let's see now for être, for instance. So if you use this il est, uh, you, will, you, you, will <laughs> you will use this structure if you want to uh, talk about the time, okay? For instance, we've got the, the first example here. Il est tard, tard is late, okay? So il est tard, it is late. Il est tard, okay? So even if we use this il, so it doesn't have the concept of he as normally we have, okay? It's really this impersonal form, okay? And then il est tôt, it is early, okay? Same thing, that's the reason why we, we, we use this il form when we put the, the, when we give the time, okay? Il est douze heures, or then il est midi, douze, twelve heures, hours, okay? And then this midi, it's noon, okay? So, il est douze heures, il est midi, all right? Second example is faire, and then it's really uh, useful to use this faire, so il fait, uh, if you want to talk about the weather, pour parler du temps, okay? Pour parler du temps, so for instance, il fait chaud, okay? Chaud, warm, hot, okay? So, il fait chaud. So if you want to say, it is hot, it is warm, then that's the structure you will have to use. Same thing if you want to say that it is cold, okay, froid is cold, il fait froid, okay, il fait chaud, il fait froid, all right? And then if you want to talk about the, the weather, okay, in that case it's beau, okay, it's a nice weather, il fait beau, okay, the opposite, mauvais, bad, il fait Mauvais. All right. Il fait chaud. Il fait froid. Il fait beau. So it's a beautiful weather. Il fait mauvais. It's a bad weather. Okay. And the last one, avoir. Avoir. So if you, well, we did introduce that a little uh, bit, bit earlier, but then this il y a structure is quite useful because you can, well, situer dans l'espace. Parler du temps, parler de l'heure. So if you want to uh, locate in, uh, into space, they say wh where things are, or then parler du temps, talk about the weather, or then parler de l'heure, talk about the time. So that's the structure you will have to use, this il y a, il y a. Okay, so let's see one example. Il y a un parc ici. Okay, so there is un parc, a park, ici, here. Il y a des nuages, clouds, il y a des nuages. So, even if we've got this il y a, okay, remember that it can be for the singular, or then it can be for the plural as well. So, this 
A won't change. Il y a des nuages. Il y a du soleil. Sun. Il y a du soleil. So there is sun. Il y a de la neige. Snow. Il y a de la neige. Okay. And then, if you want to talk about the, the time or a period. Il y a 15 ans. So in that case, it's quite interesting because when we use this il y a 15 ans, technically it's 15 years ago. So this il y a will mean ago. Il y a 15 ans, j'ai voyagé en Chine. Okay, voyager is to travel. You've got the passé composé form here. En Chine, in China. Il y a 15 ans, j'ai voyagé en Chine. So let's see them one more time. Il y a un parc ici. Il y a des nuages. Il y a du soleil, il y a de la neige, il y a 15 ans, j'ai voyagé en Chine.